Okay, and we are live. Que tal, amigo? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with this evening's live stream. It is Thursday, the 11th of April. It is 7.35 p.m. here in Madrid. And today we're going to look at some of the main stories that have caught my attention in the press, as we always do, plus some comments that have been left on the channel recently too. Again, as we always do. Uh, in the second half of this evening's live stream, we'll go into the chat, which I have here to my right. We'll check out what is happening in the chat section. So if you are in the chat section today, say hello, as many people have already done. Now, straight into the news and the anti-tourist or the anti-tourism sentiment in the Canary Islands has hit breaking point. And as we can read here, my misery, your paradise. Canary Islands residents say mass tourism is at breaking point. Residents in the Canary Islands are planning protests and strikes in a backlash against over-tourism. Campaigners say the unsustainable influx of visitors is ruining life in the holiday hotspot. One activist group on the island of Tenerife has planned a hunger strike over the construction of new hotels. Authorities had halted work on the Hotel La Tejita and Cuna del Alma in Tenerife's Puertito de Adeje over environmental breaches but construction has recently resumed. Other protest groups are saying that locals are forced to sleep in cars and caves due to soaring house prices. So, don't know about you, but maybe the hunger strike is a little bit extreme for this situation. Don't know, because remember that tourism for the Canary Islands is uh, most likely, I don't have the figures in front of me, but I would say most likely the number one uh, source of income for a lot of people on those islands, whether directly or indirectly, of course, uh, because as we saw there, lots and lots of tourists visiting the country, but it has reached a breaking point, as we can see in this headline here. My misery, your paradise. And we're talking about uh, a series or a set of islands that have spent the last 30, 40 years developing a tourism industry and of course locals have been squeezed out in some parts of the Canary Islands and that is the complaint of course but again as I said maybe a hunger strike a little bit extreme don't know let me know what you think in the comment section too extreme or should it be something that happens to get people to uh, wake up to the situation that is politicians but again as I said lots of jobs directly and indirectly uh, created through tourism in the Canary Islands. Next piece of news here, and we saw yesterday that Spain is going to legalize some 500,000 uh, illegal uh, immigrants in Spain, people that uh, live and work here illegally. And uh, Salvador Escobar, or the profile of the undocumented migrant who would be who would benefit from regular regularization. You feel like you don't exist, he says. It's very hard. You get up thinking not only about finding a job, but also about getting some money to finish the day. You go to bed with the same thought. You feel like you don't exist. Here in Toledo, where life brought him, he looks for it the, as best he can. What will I do? Well, little things like gardening. Uh, sorry, what do I do? Well, little things like gardening, some farming. Sometimes I look after a friend's child. Whatever comes up, he can't aspire to anything else because Salvador has no legal papers. He doesn't exist in Spain, neither legally nor in terms of employment. He comes from Latin America, like 77% of the undocumented residents in Spain, contributes to the underground economy without the public treasury receiving any income from his activity and lives badly far from his family. Yes, I left my wife and daughters there. How can I bring them here? If I can't even support them, he says. So this is the situation for many uh, people here in Spain. 77% of uh, illegal uh, residents, if you like, uh, from Latin America, countries like El Salvador, where this, um, I think, I'm not sure where this person comes from, but Latin America, obviously. And uh, the problem is that, right, that he can't get... Uh, a decent job, a decent job, because he doesn't have the correct paperwork, and that's what the government wants to sort out. Now, it's not the first time the government has done this. I think back in 1988 or 1999. Don't quote me on those dates, but I think there was another amnesty back then where the same amount of people, perhaps more uh, people, that were living 
in Spain irregularly uh, were able to uh, fix their situation and move into the regular economy rather than the, ir- the rather than the irregular economy which people like Salvador are in, unfortunately, and uh, living here alone, wife and family back in his country of origin. So that's what the government wants to fix. Uh, so uh, we'll see. Uh, what happens in coming weeks and months uh, if this uh, idea gets off the ground or not. But the plan is there. Another piece of news here, and a Czech tourist has died after falling into the sea while taking photos in the heavy surf in Tenerife. A 53-year-old Czech tourist died on Wednesday in Tenerife after falling into the sea while taking photos of the strong waves in an area of natural pools, according to the Emergency Coordination Centre, the 112 of the Government of the Canary Islands. The incident occurred at 4.15pm when the SECOES received the alert informing of the fall. The Emergency and Rescue Group of the Government of the Canary Islands mobilised the rescue helicopter and picked the man up from the water when he, w- when he was already in car respiratory arrest in a video uploaded by 112 to the social network X, formerly known as Twitter. It can be seen how the helicopter tries to hoist the man in the middle of a strong swell. Now, I don't know how many people have fallen into the water in the last couple of months here in Spain and died. This uh, Czech tourist, uh, the latest one, unfortunately, but uh, we saw a piece of news a couple of weeks ago, I think, uh, maybe over a holiday period here, maybe over the Easter period, of a British woman also falling into the uh, sea or ocean and uh, other another uh, three or four people dying in the same circumstance. So uh, probably a good idea to get away from uh, big waves when they're crashing over the rocks on the coast, uh, even though you want to get that uh, pick for Instagram, which is obviously what a lot of people are trying to do. They're trying to get that pick of a lifetime, put it on social media, but is it worth your life? That's the question. So unfortunately, as I said, another person dying there. Now, uh, let's go straight into the uh, comments. First comment here from uh, It's a Man. I don't really think scrapping the golden visa will have much impact on the housing issues. Portugal have done the same and have seen little to no improvement. Only 15,000 golden visas have have been issued in the last 11 11 years. It has been running, of which 94% were based on real estate purchases. Also, EU citizens will still have the right to purchase property, so only a third... So only third country investors will be impacted. The Spanish government need to look at affordable housing and rent control. Yeah, we saw uh, the issue before of uh, a demonstration group or a protest group in the Canary Islands planning a hunger strike. Not obviously because of the golden visa, but uh, because of the other problem which uh, uh, mass tourism brings, and it is... The Airbnb effect, which uh, basically forces the price of property up and limits the amount of property available to residents. That's the reality. That's what Canary Islands and many other cities in Spain. Uh, But the golden visa, I would agree with this uh, commenter here that uh, I don't really think it will have much impact either. The government says it will. But uh, as we saw the other day in the Financial Times article, it's it's a politically toxic idea at the moment and uh, um, a little bit... um, uh, well, I'm not going to say unpopular, but but uh, being able to buy your way into a country, of course, not popular politically, politically, I think, especially when the majority of people that are buying their way into Spain are from uh, countries that uh, maybe not are uh, the best of friends with Spain at the moment, uh, Russia being one of those countries there. And, of course, the other big investor in the uh, golden visa was uh, Chinese Uh, buying up uh, property around the country and also investing in businesses, I will say, because I think you have the option to invest that um, half a million in property or a business, which uh, some people do. Uh, And there's a story in the paper today of an American guy in Marbella who is affected by this uh, new law. Well, he's not personally, but he said that his brother was also planning to come here and take up uh, take up the government on their golden visa offer and uh, also open a business, create jobs, and uh, be uh, a benefit to the Spanish economy. So uh, mm, that's the issue. But again, I agree with that comment. Another one here from... Uh, sorry, we'll go look at this one here first. Hi, Stu. Wondering if Steve's comments is suggesting that Spanish, sm- Spanish smokers on Spanish terraces in their own country 
should not be smoking next to him. Maybe, if he doesn't like it, he should go indoors, smoke free of course, or go somewhere else. After all, when indoor smoking was banned, terraces were made more agreeable for smokers with heating in the winter, for example. Cheers, Drew. Keep up the good work. Al. Yeah, uh, Al, thanks for that uh, comment. Uh, telling uh, the commenter that we saw yesterday, Steve, to go inside if he doesn't like people smoking outside. But as we know, the government uh, has an agenda here to ban smoking from outdoor seating areas at bars and restaurants, which, as we know here in Spain, are very, very popular, especially on a hot summer's evening to sit outside and have a drink, whether it's a, an alcoholic drink or a, or a soft drink or have something to eat is a pleasure that many people enjoy and uh, the government thinks that uh, they would be better off as smoke-free zones as would the indoor areas and also the outdoor areas but of course some people don't agree al for example thinks that people should be allowed to smoke uh, spaniards should be allowed to smoke on these uh, outdoor seating areas and uh, if people don't like it go inside i don't agree with al of course but he's entitled to his opinion I think that uh, the uh, smoking should be banned uh, anywhere where people are consuming food. Uh, people are sitting down to eat with families, having a drink. Uh, smokers, after all, are the minority. Uh, according to, to uh, statistics, only around 35% of uh, adults smoke, I think, here in Spain, or perhaps less. Uh, less in other countries, of course, or fewer people smoke in other countries. But uh, here, around uh, 30 two, 33, 34, 35 percent, I think, so a minority. So uh, therefore, maybe they should, um, in my opinion, of course, uh, go somewhere and smoke their cigarette and then come back and uh, uh, continue with their meal. But hey, one here from uh, Rob, Australia banned smoking within five metres of all public buildings years ago and banned smoking inside restaurants, pubs and their outside areas years before that, beaches as well. It works a treat. Yes, it does, Rob. I was recently in Australia, as you know, visiting a uh, family down there, and uh, you don't see people smoking, basically. You see the odd person outside a, a, an office building having a smoke. You see the odd person outside a shopping centre having a smoke. But uh, you go to a party with 30 or 40 people, and you won't see a smoker. Whereas here, at a party with 10 people, perhaps three or four are smoking, according to statistics, of course. But in Australia, they've managed to uh, not eradicate smoking, but uh, they have done a very good job in uh, cutting down on the amount of people that do smoke and uh, therefore, um, I think in general, benefiting society. But uh, again, just my opinion. And um, yeah, here in Spain, uh, will it uh, prove popular? Not at first. Uh, people will uh, probably uh, rebel, but uh, people will come around and realize that they can't smoke in uh, these outdoor public areas, I think, like uh, restaurants and bars. Another one here from uh, Marie. Visa processing is a joke. Nine months on, I'm still waiting for my work visa. Brexit issue, uh, issues. Feel expats are put at the bottom of the pile most times. I don't think so, Mary, Mary or Marie. I don't think uh, expats are deliberately, uh, because the word expat, what does it mean? Of course, what does it mean? Somebody from uh, the UK, expat, or foreign residents, so we're all the same. We're all treated equal, equally, I think, when it comes to immigration. And I don't think just because you're from the UK, you are put at the bottom of the pile. I think that, uh, as we saw yesterday, the bureaucracy is very, very slow. That's one of the reasons why the government wants to uh, bring in this um, uh, legalization process. And uh, that's that's the issue, basically. It's just a, a very slow bureaucratic system where uh, sometimes the person just for whatever reason just says, no. Next, no, next, and then uh, that person uh, complains and it gets put back into the pile and uh, around you go. And uh, that's the way the system works and uh, nobody ever mentions that except for that article that we saw yesterday, basically. So thanks, Marie, for that. But uh, as I said, I don't think you're uh, being pushed to the bottom or being put to the bottom of the list or the bottom of the pile, as you put it here, because you are from uh, the UK. Christine also says that the last few years, the process of residency has been a bureaucratic nightmare. One year I was in Tramite so long, the paperwork expired and had to start over. It is easy to see how one can technically be illegal, although having a work contract, etc. Yeah, thanks, uh, Christine, for that. 
Uh, and again, the bureaucracy is the problem. Uh, lack of uh, public uh, people, public servants working in uh, the the system. Uh, too many uh, too many requests for residency, and uh, basically um, that's the issue. Uh, like I said, we saw that in the article yesterday in black and white. That's one of the main issues and one of the reasons why the government wants to do it, because the bureaucracy is terrible, terrible. Another one here from Patrick. How can they have a work contract if they don't have legal papers? Well, Christine just pointed it out there that maybe they don't have an official work contract, but they might have a job that they've been working uh, in for the last few years. And I imagine that uh, what will ha- what will happen is that the um, uh, employer will write a letter saying that this person has been working in this company for the last two or three years or however long in order to get uh, access to that uh, amnesty. So that's how it works. That's how people did it before. Your employer, obviously, they don't get any um, uh, problems, uh, you know, by hiring illegal workers. But let's be honest, it happens, right? So uh, if these people can prove that they've been working and residing in Spain for that two-year period, they're entitled to apply for this upcoming amnesty whenever it happens. As I said, the government has just announced it. Not sure when it's going to happen, but it's been announced. And the final one here from uh, David I think the talk of people living in their cars in Ibiza is just the media story. I live in Ibiza and I have never seen anyone or anybody living in a car. Also, the chef cannot earn enough to get a flat. How do all the other low-paid staff manage? Good question, David. And uh, maybe if you haven't seen people living in their cars in Ibiza, you're not looking in the right places. I don't know. But uh, I've seen this uh, on numerous news stories over the years, people living in uh, in um in uh, cars there were some uh, houses that were being rented out to 40 or 50 people at a time basically any uh, spare square meter on the floor was taken up by a mattress so that's how people are living in some parts of Ibiza maybe not where you're living David but I can almost guarantee that it is happening is it a huge problem are there you know hundreds of people thousands of people living in their cars no But uh, there are people living in their cars and doing it tough, especially when that tourist season rocks around, uh, you know, starting in uh, May, uh, May, June, July, August, September, uh, perhaps into the uh, first 15 days of October as well. Not sure, but that's when a lot of people go to places like Ibiza and that's when they have trouble getting accommodation as well. But thanks for the comment, David. Now we're going to change the backdrop. This photo was sent in by Julian. And it is the north of Spain, Galicia to be exact. Not sure of the exact part of Galicia, but I think it's in the A Coruña province. Uh, Julian did tell me where it was exactly, but I can't remember what he said. Uh, Ortigueira, I think, is the name of the place up there in A Coruña. So a beautiful coastal shot here, the, um, uh, the typical rugged coastline that you find in that part of Spain. And uh, very, very cold water. Mm, very very cold water i'm shivering just looking at that water how cold it is because it's the same water that hits the portuguese coast as well so thanks julian for sending this picture through got a similar picture that you would like to see on the backdrop the email address is this one here spainspeaks at gmail.com there we go so if you have anything to send my way please that is the email address article uh janet sent me through something today Uh, regular viewer and channel member Janet on the uh, issue of Tenerife which also made another press outlet in the UK so I can't remember exactly which uh, paper it was but um, yeah it's getting uh, some attention around the world when you mention the uh, the words uh, hunger strike you get attention let's be honest So thanks uh, for sending that through and pictures also to this address here as I said. Now the like button also on the screen if you haven't hit it yet please do so currently at 59 likes two dislikes thank you very much for uh that for coming all the way here watching and uh, hitting the like uh, hitting the dislike button you uh you deserve a trophy my friends um yeah so 60 likes hit the like button we'll see if we can get up to a decent tally today also to people that have supported the channel whether it's through the uh, super thanks option on youtube buy me a coffee the lovely coffees that I have uh, in the morning, uh, 
uh, that uh, come from uh, your support. Uh, longer term supporters on Patreon, thank you very much for that. And also to uh, channel members, people that have joined the channel recently, and they're the people that have a little um, a little symbol next to their name in the chat. You can see quite uh, quite a few of them this evening. Now into the chat, I'm going to go now. Let me scroll up to the top. First one that I can see here is from Barbara, Barbara, regular viewer, channel member, yellow uh, star beside, or yellow sun, I think that looks like, beside her name, sun emoji. Uh, Ola Dollars from Playa Flamenca, where it has been a pleasant sunny 19 degrees Celsius today. Going to Thadagotha tomorrow for a few days, and then the temperature is forecast to be 26, 28 degrees over the weekend. Yes, it is uh, forecast a uh, very a uh, nice weekend in many parts of the country, 26, 28 degrees. I think Barbara's been travelling quite a lot lately, uh, so Tharagotha also on the list, getting out, experiencing all that Spain has to offer. And uh, Tharagotha, of course, uh, famous for the uh, big religious building there, in the <laughs> which you can't miss and can be seen from any part of the city. Andrew, figures suggest only 200-odd people from the UK applied for the gold visa, much less than China, Canada, USA. Uh, so why the fuss? Uh, because uh, people would like to have the option, I suppose, if they, uh, we saw somebody the other day who was uh, in the process of selling their home, uh, trying to get the 500,000 euros together to apply for the golden visa. And I'm sure other people are like that. People want to have the choice. People want to live in Spain. So when you get one of these avenues cut off, of course, a fuss is created. Uh, Gigi, coming in from Arizona. Shortly uh, back in Spain, Gigi, I saw your email. I will reply soon. Perfect day for the pool and a good book. 92 degrees Fahrenheit, 33, 33 Celsius there. John coming in also, regular viewer. Evening, everyone. Warm and sunny in Essex. Have a great weekend. Thanks, John. Alan coming in from... Rancho Pesquinitos, California, 21 degrees there. Uncle Alan. Marianne coming in from San Diego also. Wishing everyone a lovely day. Richard, valued member also, coming in from uh, North York's milder and dry there today. Thanks for that. Alan's still missing El Puerto de Santa Maria. Of course, where he spends a fair bit of time, does Alan down there, sipping on Cruz Campo Beer. And uh, Finito, or Jerez, or whatever they drink down there in El Puerto. Probably uh, Jerez, right? Or uh, in um, that part of Spain. Is there another drink? I think there is. I can't remember what's it called. What it's called. Freedom Hunter asking a question about van life in Spain as regards to parking up for a few nights. Also, are the Spanish government promoting free parking for camper vans and seeking more paid campsites in Spain? Don't know because I'm not a camper freedom hunter, but I'm sure somebody will be able to answer your question. Uh, I know that uh, you are allowed to uh, park up for a few nights, maybe one night at least, as long as you don't uh, uh, put tables outside or uh, you know extend the awning on your van or things like that. If you just sleep in the van and uh, don't make any mess, any noise, or uh, you know uh, think that you're uh, you know setting up uh, your own um, uh, table and chairs outside and things like that you shouldn't have an issue but the uh, civil guard will come around if you do that and probably tell you to move on but if you're just sleeping in the van i don't think there's an issue to be honest it's called uh per noctar, and it is uh permitted unless there's a sign up saying otherwise so if it's a popular place and the locals have complained that signs go up but uh, if you're just in the middle of nowhere and you stop on the side of the road in a, in a parking area and you uh, hop into your bed, hop into your bunk and have, uh, 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 you know, get some sleep, have a kip, 40 winks, whatever you want to say, uh, you shouldn't have an issue. But uh, just don't uh, sit, out, uh, sit outside with your table enjoying breakfast. Otherwise, they could tell you to move on. Roland coming in from Minneapolis. How is uh, the little dog Mika? Not sure how Mika's doing, Roland, but uh, little Mia over there is uh, enjoying a siesta at the moment. She seems to, she seems to spend a lot of time uh, sleeping, does Mia, especially when she has a long walk. Jonathan, regular uh, viewer and uh, channel member, also saying hello. 
Marion saying hi there as well. Renan coming in from LA. Paul Gerard, channel member also coming in. Pleasant weather there. Germany, I think it is. 18 degrees Celsius. James and Kathy coming in from Worcester. Had some sun there today. Roll on Spain in a few weeks. Janet coming in from Oxford, who sent me something through earlier today. Thanks for that, Janet. Maga coming in from Alicante, El Campello. Just north of Alicante, of course, is El Campello. Uh, what else? Roland's are flying into Malaga in uh, four days. There we go. Enjoy down there. You're going to get some good weather. I have uh, saw the forecast for next week because uh, I'm planning a trip down to not Malaga, but uh, south anyway. And uh, the weather's looking good. Former Madrid correspondent Dave is in the chat, currently in uh, St. Petersburg, I think it is, reporting from the very wet and windy west coast of Florida. Well, you got a uh, tropical storm or something there, Dave? Let us know. Pamela coming in from San Juan de los Terreros. Uh, Gary, as uh, soon as he can earn, then all the dependents follow. Spain just lowers its standards. Well, obviously, if you come to live in a country, Gary, uh, and you have a family that you've been a, a, away from for a number of years, you would like them to come and live with you, right? And uh, many countries are generous in this regard, that they allow you to uh, bring your wife over. Uh, they allow you to bring your children as well, uh, because it's all part of the, uh, the process. Uh, what else we got going on here? Paul Gerard saying, would you believe it? That unwanted tourism is catching even here in Germany. Some are thinking that it's best done on purpose due to the climate change. I don't know. I'm off to Cantab Cantabria soon. Thanks uh, for that. Uh, what else? Let's have a look. France is coming in from uh, Fife in Scotland. 15 degrees there. Sunny. Yeah. Enjoy the uh, sunny day in that part of the world. But rain back uh, back again tomorrow with rain. There we go. Every place is getting over-touristed. Nobody has any kind of real solution. I don't know that there is one. No, there's probably not, Jonathan, because it's very cheap to travel for a lot of people nowadays. You can get cheap flights. You can get cheap uh, hotel deals. And it's become a really big industry. Everybody loves to travel. Everybody loves to go to different places around the world. Uh, you know, you can fly to the Canary Islands from other parts of Europe quite cheaply, hotel deals included, and uh, people have travel and uh, holidays as a priority. Of course, not like when I was a boy, uh, you know, we were lucky to um, go anywhere on holiday except for uh, my mum's hometown. A lot of the times, didn't go to many other places, <laughs> I can tell you. What else we got going on here? Uh, what's this uh, man like going to uh, Alicante with a friend for the first time good luck Ellen is coming in here from uh, Sarasota Florida wet and windy there also so Spain has problems with undocumented immigrants and tourists yeah well uh, you know trying to uh, work the uh, problems out of course not easy but uh, when you become popular uh, people want to live there right uh, Giles, hi, Stu, do you know how to declare income tax? What, here in Spain? Yeah, you, uh, you uh, fill out a form uh, telling the uh, tax department what you've earned and all of your assets as well. Send it in and you either get money back or they, uh, they want more. That's how it works. But, uh, yeah, it's called um, IRPF, IRPF is what it's called. My, my advice, uh, Giles, would be to go and see a, a gestor, a type of accountant that will do it all for you for a reasonable price, and uh, they know what they're doing. Dave saying, uh, speaking of smoking, recreational cannabis will be on the Florida ballot this November. There we go, recreational cannabis. So Florida, perhaps one of the um, states that doesn't have that uh, already legal, Dave. Uh huh. Mad Planet saying, My pops was born in Dublin, hence me acquiring an Irish passport. Best thing he's done, enabling me to live and work in Fuerteventura without any restrictions. Absolutely. Those European passports come in very handy indeed. They come in very handy, especially if you want to live in the European Union. No stress. Just uh, come over here, 
tell the uh, authorities that you're, uh, you have decided to move, and away you go. Ian, coming in from uh, not sure where, but sleeping in cars. What does that person think is happening in the rest of the world? Rent and prices are extortionate. And when migrants are being given houses, ETC. Yeah, there we go. Migrants are being given houses and locals are sleeping in cars, according to Ian. There we go. Gus, hi, maybe people shouldn't go to work it to Ibiza to put pressure on employers to pay more. Yeah, doesn't work. Doesn't work because we all know that when uh, these bars and restaurants can't get employers, they just work short-staffed and the customers suffer. But it doesn't matter because the same people come back next year or the year after. That's the tourism model. Thumbado, terrible situation in Ibiza. Cars, caravans, tents, people sleeping everywhere and no hospitality workers, only Guadalajara's hospital, not only, sorry, not only hospitality workers, but civil guards, hospital staff. Thanks for the news, Stu. Well, according to the uh, other uh, person that we saw there, Thumbado, hasn't seen it. Let me go back to that comment from, uh, who was it? David, hasn't seen it in Ibiza, but uh, Thumbado, who also lives in uh, Ibiza, has seen it. Not only hospitality workers, but also uh, uh, public workers as well, whose uh, salaries uh, don't increase when they get sent to these places with higher cost of living. That's why nobody wants to go there. But, uh, yeah, when you work in the Civil Guard, you get sent, probably. Jeff, coming in from uh, Liverpool, uh, New York, for a couple of weeks. Liverpool, New York. There we go. Good to see you, Jeff. Uh... AFV, ban everything that, and if that doesn't work, ban it some more. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Wallendorf, uh, sorry, Wolfendorf coming in from uh, Vienna, 20 degrees there. Belinda's coming in from the United States. Uh, once we had the Bracero program, and maybe that's what's needed here. The program brought millions of Mexican men to the United States to work in industries needing workers, legal path. There we go. Janet's uh, dog, Archie, 12, sleep, sleeps most of the time these days. How old's Mia? Yeah, Mia's uh, four this year, uh, Janet, but uh, she sleeps after a long walk. We normally go out for about an hour in the morning, then she runs around for another couple of hours, and then she uh, crashes. And uh, tonight she'll, um, she'll be back, but uh, she's just having a little sleep before that period, before the uh, dinner period. Or not her dinner, she's already had that uh, hours. Richard, uh, Stu, the other wine is similar uh, similar to Jerez is Montilla, Moriles. It uh, can't be called Jerez because of the area. Yeah, I knew there were different wines down there. Thanks, Richard, for that. Thanks for that. Oh, we coming to Seville. I'm there on the 27th of this month. Uh, yeah, but I'm not going to Seville. Uh, no, I'm going down that way, but not to Seville. And uh, not on those dates. But if I were, definitely. Just the passing storm, says uh, Dave. Nothing uh, serious. Not like the normal hurricanes that they get in that part of the world. World, one, two, three, Sean, away is here. Late uh, again, thanks to work. Have to listen back, no problems. Lorcan, coming in from Ireland. Love the show. Very informative. We spend a lot of time in Casares, Costa Blanca, San Luis de Sabanillas. Thanks again. Thanks, Lorcan. And uh, Lena saying here that uh, it seems natural that Spain would have so many tourists as well as undocumented workers. Spain is like f the Florida of Europe because of its weather and coastlines. Yes, that is true, uh, Elena. Uh, a lot of similarities between the uh, two countries in that regard, the weather of... Uh, but, um, yeah, uh, different in many ways, similar in others. I think that we've been shown that the Florida weather's a, a lot more humid than many parts of Spain, I think somebody said. So I'll have to go with that. And Andrew coming in here also a bit late today on parade. Late on parade that I hope we are well. Thank you very much, Andrew. Now it's the 34-minute mark. Time to wrap the live stream up. It's been a pleasure as always. I'll be back again on Sunday with another live stream. Uh, back again with another video tomorrow, most likely. Can't guarantee it, but I think I will be able to put one out. So stay tuned for that. Uh, thanks for uh, participating in the chat. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hitting that like button. We got 106 in the end. Hasta luego, hasta entonces. Adios.